Are you, are you sure this is legal? I don't know. It's fun though, isn't it? guys we're getting it as you can see the uh, emergency overflow pipe is in and we also got the T put in way back over here which is one of the two uh, return lines that was definitely a tricky cut but we got this in so that now if I do want to do a water change or if I need to drop this down quickly Obviously, uh, we have the ability to do at least 188 gallons of water. That might not sound a lot, obviously, on a system that's pushing roughly 1,400 gallons of water, but at least that option is there. So I've just got a temporary pipe in right now. Eventually, that is going to work its way, way back over there to the house drain, and obviously, it's going to work its way over here, and we're going to have a 90 probably a back-to-back -back 90 put right there on this emergency drain here. So this one will be tied in with this one, which will head way back over there. Other than that, you can see I've got the, the two supply lines. Those are now finally in position with the back-to-back -back 45s on those that go into chamber one. And obviously we have finally the check valves are in position. These are the return lines. And same thing right here, back-to-back -back 45s for a nice uh, smooth transition. And those are way up underneath here. And they work their way over. And they tie into this manifold back here. He delivers on the goods. Look at him pump up this crowd. Which will work its way to the right. And I'm getting ready to put in, uh, so this T right here, this sweep T is probably gonna be for excess discharge. So if in the event that there is so much coming out on these two, even though those might be choked a little bit evenly, I'm going to have this one with its valve to dump back into the sump. But now there's going to be another T, which is this guy right here. And I think I'm going to work its way into the two paper filters, where I, which I got a couple months ago. Remember, these are the ones from Ohio Fish Rescue, and these are from the, from the Bellagio tanks from Las Vegas which uh, they now finally have set up. Those tanks are looking great. Make sure to go to their channel and look at the Bellagio tanks, which are up and running. But this paper filter, there's actually two of them. And my second one is going to be incorporated into the saltwater system for the 900-gallon tank. You'll see that in due time. But I'm thinking with this Hammerhead Gold Hybrid, 6,000 gallons per hour, that I might have enough to not only feed the two main lines heading back to the tank, but I think I can steal just enough with another gate valve here to feed these guys and then dump right back into the sump. So I'm looking into that right now. So other than that, that's where we stand right now. I'm also setting up the first of two chambers. These are 82 gallons a piece. I've got to cut holes in the top 
I've got to do a, a couple of modifications to to these. Uh, you're going to see some valve control on probably the left and right side. This is the first of two chambers. This one here is going to be holding the K2 media for the biological side of the tank. And you're going to see water passing through it. It's going to dump into a second one, which is going to be filled with lava rock. And in time, six months to a year, 18 months downstream, what that does, it helps lower the nitrates within the system. But that's a whole other conversation. We'll get into that later in time. But you're probably going to see these two chambers here being fed from another pump, probably a mag drive down inside the 120. But I'm also kicking around the idea of having a redundant pipe coming from the hammerhead if in the event that the mag drive were to maybe break down or something goes sour. I might be have the ability through more valve control to sneak some of this pressure coming off the hammerhead, which could tie into these guys. So I'm looking at that as far as a redundant system, but that's that's up and coming. But that's where we're at, and uh, it's starting to come together. It won't be long now. All right, guys, we're back. So now the next uh, the next job is to glue chamber two to chamber three. And once again, this is just as tricky as gluing over here. If you can see chamber one to chamber two. Because one of the problems is there's like 24 different things that we've got to do in a matter of one minute. We want to clean the inside of the two inch bulkheads, right? So you've got six of those. We need to clean the end of this pipe and the end of this pipe. So now there's 12 more actions there. So I can clean all of these, right? So I've got six, uh, six of those to clean, six of these to clean. And then, uh, then the next thing we got to do is obviously put glue here and here on all six. Quickly slide this one in. Quickly slide this one in. So it's going to happen like this. And then once all of these are put in position, Jack will actually go to the end of this 120 gallon tank and we'll bring these two together so that as the tank is moving forward, this lines up absolutely perfect. You can't have this or this or this or the, any, any which way it has to be right on the money. And then it has to be, if you look at this surface right here, where these two faces are, that's got to be perfect around the circumference. So everything's got to happen real quick. So we're not going to be able to film this, but that's the uh, that's what we're trying to achieve. So wish us luck. Here we go. All right, guys, we're back, and I'm happy to say that that turned out well. That's two. And Jack knocked that out. And I tell you what, that was nerve-wracking. Because you want those six pipes to line up absolutely perfect. You don't want those flanges cockeyed from one to its mate. Because that, you know, once you put that nut on there and start clamping together the union, obviously you'd be inducing stress. And, you know, if one of these is crooked to the other, this is going to try to pull the two together. In this case, we're back to that glass and, you know, putting pressure on it, and God forbid if we break it. So that, that turned out good. It's all glued and set up, and I'm happy with that. So with that, we are moving on. And the next thing is you can see the continuous of this manifold right here. There is going to be this pipe. This is just sitting here temporary. I think I'm going to pull this in closer. And I think you're going to see a union put right here. And then obviously you've got to clamp this down so there's no, you know, there's no pressure on it. So we're going to lock that down. But this gate valve here is going to be for excess discharge. But we are going to continue this pipe over. And you're going to see another sweep T with probably another uh, union and another gate valve. This one's going to be inch and a half, though. 
and this is going to feed that paper filter. But this is going to be a kind of a delicate balance with this gate valve as it's working hand in hand with these two gate valves. So I, I got to dial all this in when the time comes. But obviously the goal is to make it so that we can have it so that the hammerhead is giving us just enough pressure to to run through those paper filters. So that'll be that'll be really nice. So that's what's coming up right now. So we're going to get this pipe in, we're going to put the T in, then obviously that pipe will continue over to this back-to-back -back 45, which comes from the, from the main driving motor. The other thing I want to point out real quick is that I did make a decision, and this is going to be the, the motor that's going to sit down inside the sump. And uh, this guy here does 1,900 gallons an hour. And this is what's going to drive the two chambers over here. So you're going to see some action on that finally. And I'm going to make it so that the piping system comes out of this with some more gate valves. I think we're going to get fancy here, as I showed you and told you earlier, coming off the main hammerhead. We're in the event that this goes down, I can kind of backfeed into the same piping to drive both of these chambers because I don't want this just sitting idle if in the event that something goes bad over here. So you're going to see how that's coming together. But that's where we're at. We were moving on. Things are coming together. And uh, let's keep building. Alright guys, I had to show you this because this is starting to get a little crazy. What an intimidator. Ernie McCracken. How about one more title, sweetness? So this is uh, this is the kind of stuff I actually love to do. This is the layout and design of the filtration system, and there's obviously a lot going on. So just to give you a a little bit of a snapshot, so this kind of makes somewhat of sense. Obviously, this is not done because I'm still already seeing issues that I need to uh, to correct. But just the way it is right now. You can see, get over here in position. So the water will get picked up by the motor. And obviously you want to have it so you have valve control and it's got a built-in uh, quick disconnect so you can close that valve. So if in an event I need to remove the motor, I can just back off that nut and out comes the motor. So I've got that on the supply and you got the same thing on the return. So you want to make sure that you have that. Now you can see that the water will actually come up and head over to the left and that's where it takes off underneath the catwalk and splits right there and takes off back to the tank. But as I spoke about earlier, you're going to have this one here if in the event I need to relieve some of the pressure. But now we've got this one in position. I'm going to need another valve here, which will feed the two paper filters. And then it too goes back into the sump. The other thing that I'm looking at doing, as we talked about a few minutes ago, was to break into here, right, and use this as a backup for chambers one and two here where the K2 media is going to go into this one and then the lava rock will be going into this one. Whole nother conversation, but you can see how we're starting to lay this out. You're going to get a bulkhead and a one inch pipe down there with a valve. You're going to get another one over here. This water will be very volatile with the K2 media in it. That water will rise and then obviously we're going to be drilling holes on the side here with three inch and a half bulkheads. It's going to 90 down. Go to this bulkhead, right? Where you'll see a 90 coming in. Three of them. So 90 down, 90 in. 
that water now will rise step up to three inch and a half bulkheads to a two inch pipe and then that will take off back to the sump but because that's a backup the primary is actually right here so this does 1900 gallons an hour so this has got to come over and obviously feed these two this is where it gets a little tricky now we've got a UV sterilizer here and this is a big one this is a Pentar and they actually provide a two inch opening and I've already got it stepped down to inch and a half now what I was going to do was I was going to put this part of this new manifold coming from here but at 1900 gallons an hour you're going to see a, a, a gauge that'll be here probably in a couple days and I can actually dial this in with the gate valve and what we're trying to achieve is that of 25 gallons a minute because we want that uh, we want that UV sterilizer to provide the, the delivered dose to the water so we're trying to get that exposure time with no more than 25 gallons an hour so and I talked to the technical specialist right there technical sport and I actually talked to a guy by the name of Aaron great guy who works at Pentair and he was the one that pretty much told me about the, the desired dosed dose that we're trying to achieve so no more than 25 25 gallons per minute so you're going to see how this gets tied in but I was going to do it here but obviously when I dial this in 25 times 60 right that's 1500 gallons an hour well that does 9, 1900 so that's only 400 gallons left up, left over for these two so that's where the problem lies so I'm starting to think that I don't want this tied in with that I'm starting to think now I have to redesign this a little bit and maybe tie the the UV sterilizer in with the hammerhead which now I'm now looking at this right through the paper filter maybe I can somehow incorporate it right here on the outgoing line of the paper filter and I'll be able to dial this in with the gate valve that is here to, to achieve that 25 gallons per minute all this technical stuff for fish all right let's go Thank you for the education, gentlemen. We've just received a PhD in stupidity. Doctor, shall we? Unbelievable. All right, but that's where we're at. I just wanted you to see how the layout is starting to unfold. <laughs>